Damn storm. You're listening to Interactive Wrestling Radio, featuring the interactive interview, courtesy of WrestlingEpicenter.com. Hello. 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 Who am I hello. speaking with? Hello. Storm. Storm. Oh, hello, James Storm. Hi, hi. It's uh, it's uh, Kevin from Steel Chair Magazine here. How are you doing? Good, man. How are you doing? I'm very well, thanks. I'm very well, thanks. I, I thought I thought I had a little bit more time. You took me by surprise, but it's uh, you know, thank you for your time. I really appreciate it. Uh, no problem. Um, shall I fire away with my first question, James? Yeah. So. Being a great, you know, one of the greatest, 50% of the greatest tag teams uh, oh! that I've ever seen. That was a weird noise. Did you hear that, James? Yeah, <laughs> Okay. <laughs> so, you're 50% of one of the greatest tag teams I've personally seen over the uh, last 10 years, Beer Money Incorporated. So, uh, what I wanted to know, James, what are your five favourite tag teams growing up? Uh, you know, and why? What, how do they inspire you? And you know, what makes a great tag team in general? Uh, you know, growing up, especially being, uh, you know, from Tennessee or whatever, I, I, I kind of lean more toward, uh, you know, the Rock and Roll Express. I was just, uh, you know, I was a big fan of theirs growing up. Even, even now, I'm still a big fan. Uh, you know, if I'm on shows with them. Uh, you know, Absolutely, I, I, yeah, they're great. They're great. So, yeah, so you know, I can learn from them. So I was really happy when they, they got. You know, inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame. Uh, it's a really cool honor for those guys. They deserve it. Uh, but you know, uh, you know, you don't really have to get along with the person that you wrestle with. Uh, you know, you can come from different backgrounds and do whatever. I mean, me and Bobby proved that. You know, he's Canadian, and here I am, a redneck from Tennessee, and uh, you know, we just made it work. You know, you, know, you take two guys who uh, who kind of just feed off each other, and, and that's the that's the whole key. You just gotta learn how to feed off each other instead of one guy going out there and trying to be uh, the single star of a, of a tag team. And what I loved about, if you don't mind me interjecting here, what I loved about you and Bobby Roode uh, was the fact that you used to have open arguments in the middle of a match. Oh, and I, yeah. Great. I loved it, and I still love it now. I'm getting excited talking about it just now, you know? Yeah, I mean, it's just, uh, you know, just one of those things that, you know, me and him, we never hit our feelings from each other at all. <laughs> like, you know, like if something go right in the match, like we would, we would literally sit there and argue, and people would think it's part of the match or show or whatever, and a lot of times it wasn't. Like, we were like, no, freak, do this. Oh, brilliant. No, do, do it this way. And I was like, ah. So, but, I mean, and that's just what made us work. Like, we just, you know, like, we agreed to disagree, and we did our jobs, you know. You did it brilliantly, and like, like, especially the argument. I've not really seen anyone do it uh, in the style that you and Bobby Roode do it. I mean, we've had those sort of angles, I suppose. And like you say, most of the time that was actually happening, you know, and, and it was brilliant. It was brilliant. I've got to say that. Thank you. So, so uh, yeah, what, what, what makes a great tag team, uh, in your opinion? Uh, you, you know, like I said, uh, check your ego at the door, uh, you know. You don't want one guy going out there and trying just to be uh, the big star of the team. Uh, you know, you got to let the team shine, and uh, you got to put the team first uh, instead of, you know, a lot of these tag teams, you get single stars uh, put together, and, you know, they don't know how to check their egos, and one, one guy wants to be a bigger star than the other guy in the tag team. And it wasn't that way with me and Bobby. Like, we both, uh, you, you know, wanted this, knowing our roles and, and you know, and, had a, had a mindset to make it work and, and do whatever it did, or you know, whatever it took to make it work. Sit back, be humble, and be a team player. I mean, you know, I completely appreciate that. Can I squeeze in another question or two, James? Yeah, sure. Muted. Good afternoon, everybody. This is Ross Foreman with Impact Wrestling. We want to welcome today's special guest. As you've heard, he's been on here a little bit. We're having a little, had a little technical difficulties, but those are all taken care of now. Uh, Cowboy James Storm is with us this week. The recording uh, has started. Cowboy, how are things going for you? Man, it's going great. I'm above dirt, so that's a good day. <laughs> that's, what, that's what I always say. All right. Well, what's uh, what's going on with you this week? 
Uh, not much, you know, just, uh, you know, just trying to live life to the fullest, you know, especially after seeing all this uh, Las Vegas stuff going on. You know, I, I had a bunch of friends out there uh, that were actually performing on stage, you know, while, while this was going on. And, uh, you, you know, you get everybody, you know, especially me being a redneck in the South or whatever you think I would be for all these guns and stuff like that, but I'm not. Like, I believe in the Second Amendment, but I believe our forefathers didn't really know much about machine guns when they were writing that amendment. So uh, I think it kind of needs to be rewritten because I don't think, uh, you know, a civilian needs to have automatic machine guns to protect themselves. All right. Well, are you a uh, a country music fan? Uh, you, you know, it's funny that you say that. Like, uh, I listen to all kind of music. Uh, but, you know, definitely growing up in the South, uh, you know, a big country music fan. But I like a lot of the... Uh, you know the the older country, uh, you know Johnny Cash and uh, Merle Haggard and Willie Nelson and uh, kind of the the gritty, uh, you know darker country. Uh, I think today's country's kind of gotten a little too pop. You know I think we blame Shania, uh, not Shania Twain, but uh, uh, Taylor Swift for that. <laughs> uh, and you, you said you knew some of the performers at the uh, at that event. Yeah, you know uh, my friends. Uh, Big and Rich was there, and Cowboy Troy, uh, DJ Silver, uh, and also Jason Aldean, uh, who actually lives in the same town I live in. Also, you know, they were all out there. And uh, I, actually, I actually had a couple buddies that were uh, four doors down from where the shooter was at. Well, all righty. Well, let's uh, let's skip from the sadness <laughs> of uh, pick this up a little bit. I'm not sure how to how to transition out of that, but I'll just ask you, Cowboy. We got November 5th right around the corner. Aberdeen Pavilion in Ottawa, Ontario, Canada, bound for glory. Uh, you know all about that event. Your thoughts? You know, I, you know, I say this every year, and, and and I do mean it. This is one of the events that I do look forward to, uh, just because it's it's one of those events where uh, you can just see a little extra pep and the guys step when they're out there, and uh, you know when they're running around the back getting ready to to go out and perform. You know, they they want to go out there, and you know, no matter what nobody says, like the guys that we have on our roster, they go out there and they. I give it 110 percent to uh, you know put on the best show that they can for for the people you know watching it and and as me as a uh, spectator like I still watch the show especially if I'm on early like I you know I'll get to the back and I'll watch it because I'm still a fan of professional wrestling and you know a lot of guys will come up to me after their match and ask you know what can they work on or or what did I see or what can you know they approve on and and I you know I I give them my thoughts and you know and that's a cool thing that the the younger guys kind of come up to me and ask my opinion on it but uh. You know, it's just one of those things where uh, everybody steps up, and uh, you know, this uh, November fifth is going to be no different, uh, especially in Canada, where you know the fans we haven't been up there in a while, and it's <laughs> it's going to be pretty crazy. And plus, a lot of Canadians drink a lot of beer. It's uh, ice cold beer up there, huh? <laughs> That's it. You know, people always ask me, "Hey, what's your favorite beer?" And I always say the same answer everywhere I go: cold one. All righty. Well, Cowboy, we're going to open it up for some questions here uh, for the media. As always, I would ask that you identify yourself and your media outlet, and if we could limit it to one question so we can uh, roll through a bunch of questions for the Cowboy. Q&A session has started. To ask your question, please press star six. Hi, James. It's uh, Adam from the Impact Lounge here in the UK. How are you this evening? I'm doing great, man. How are you doing? Yeah, really good, thanks. Really good. And uh, just like to say, obviously, uh, a huge fan of yours. Um, over your career with uh, as Impact and formerly TNA as it was, you've obviously been in many different roles, as in uh, sometimes a heel heading up a stable, usually the, the baby face with the crowd behind you. From a creative point of view, what what do you prefer, and what gets your your juices going? Uh, you know, especially if I was if I was in creative, I would definitely have me as a baby face because, uh, you know, I'm I'm one of the guys who can go out and I always say to make a good baby face, you got to be able to talk on the mic. Uh, you know, a heel can kind of get away with uh, not really being able to talk that great on the mic, but you know, to make a really great baby face, you just got to be able to talk and. You know, if I was doing creative, I would definitely have me as a as a baby face just because I know how to go out there and 
interact with the crowd and uh, I, I can, you know, just go off script and, and, and just play along and do whatever it takes to kind of get the crowd into it. Uh, you know, me, I love being the baby face, but I always tell everybody it's so much easier to kind of be the heel, especially nowadays, because it's always easier, to, it's just a lot easier to make people hate you than it is to like you, uh, especially these days with social media and all that stuff. So, but, you know, to, to answer the question real short, you know, I, I really do prefer being a baby face. Thanks. Ryan Ryder here from Main Event Radio. James, aside from the great Canadian beer, what are you looking forward to at Bound for Glory in Canada? Uh, I'm looking forward to the crowd. You know, uh, you know, we've been in an impact zone just for a long time. Uh, and, and just to see mm-hmm. new faces out in the crowd and just uh, and, and, and always say that's when you know and, and find out who's over and who's not because there's a lot of times with Impact Zone where, uh, you know, you get the same group of fans and everything and uh, they want to cheer this guy or that guy or whatever. But, you know, when we start going on the road, that's when creative can kind of say, oh, well, this guy's, you know, over and this guy's not as much over as we thought he was. But just, uh, you know, going out and performing in front of a different crowd and just uh, – and, and I'm – you know, I performed in Canada a lot, and I know how rowdy they can get. And that just helps out, you know, with the performance in the ring. The louder the crowd is, to me, the more adrenaline is pumping uh, for the guys in the ring. Hi, James. David Dunn with the New Zealand Pro Wrestling Informer here. I was just wondering if you could touch on the differences between uh, wrestling in singles competition and wrestling as a tag team, and whether it's uh, a particularly easy transition to make or if there's a bit of a bit of a time there when you're going between being part of a successful tag team and then having a singles run. Uh, you know, I always tell people the, difference, the big difference between wrestling single and wrestling a tag team is the number of bumps that you take in the match. Like, you kind of cut them in half, so you're you know, got longevity now in your career. Uh, what a lot of people don't know is, you know, before I even joined up with TNA, I was wrestling, you know, five years by myself, uh, doing a bunch of stuff on the independents and then WCW and stuff. And then uh, when I came to TNA is when they stuck me in America's Most Wanted. And i kind of been a tag team wrestler almost the whole time here in Impact and just singles runs here and there or whatever. But, uh, uh, you, you know, for, for a tag team, uh, like I said, you cut your bumps in half, but then when you go back to being singles, you have to work on your in-ring cardio a lot more, just because you're you're not now you're in the ring the whole time instead of you know tagging in and out you know 50 percent of the time. Hi James, we spoke a little earlier at the start of this uh, conference call. You okay, Phil? Sammy, you, Sammy, you again? Sammy, you again? <laughs> yeah. yeah, me again. I hope you don't mind. How you doing? <laughs> good. You're good. So I know you only like a cold one, especially Canadian, but being British, I love my beer over here. I do like my imports as well. I've got a thing for the old Brooklyn lager. But do tell me this. Uh, have you tried much uh, popular English uh, beers, lagers, and which one's your favorites? Uh, you know, it's you know, <laughs> funny you say that. Actually, I have, especially when I go over there, uh, you know, with uh, Bram or, or Bram Magnus. Or uh, Bram. You, you know, like, I, I really can't tell you. Uh, which is which or which one's my favorite because I always just leave the order up to them and they'll bring back a pint of beer and, and a shot of Jack Daniels, <laughs> you know? So, uh, but you, you know, I, I, I definitely tell a difference just because, you know, it's, it's thicker uh, over in the UK than it is here in the U S you know? Hello, Mr. Storm. This is big great for one wrestling.com. Uh, thank you for allowing us to join you here today. How are you today? Doing good. Can you speak up a little bit? I can hardly hear you. <laughs> yep, yep, sorry about that. Um, first and foremost, Mr. Bill After wanted to uh, say hello and tell you that the king of karaoke sends his salutations to your family, sir. <laughs> he is definitely the king of karaoke. <laughs> that's, what he, that's what he told me to tell you. So I don't know what that means. I don't know if it's an inside joke between you guys, but he seemed to uh, get a, quite a chuckle off of it. Yes, uh, we, we, we've tried karaoke a couple times, you know, we're, but we're, we'll never be on the next American Idol, that's for sure. Goodness, I'd pay to see that. But uh, neither here nor there, you've had an amazing career with Impact Wrestling. You've had a, a brief stint in NXT. Uh, America's most wanted beer, money, fortune, revolution. I mean, you've had, been a part of so many different types of uh, different factions within the company. Now, my question is regarding the, I guess I, I would say the last faction you were part of, the Death Crew Council, the DCC. 
that fashion never really grew into what a lot of the fans thought it might have been. What was the long-term plan for that faction moving forward? And did you have any say regarding uh, the path that faction was supposed to go? And just what was the DCC really supposed to be? Yeah, you know, at, at the uh, we were actually supposed to come back as, you know, quote unquote baby faces, uh, uh, because they never really ex- explained how Bram got out of the trunk of the car with uh, Decay when he got through in there, and. I never kind of explained the backstory uh, with Eddie coming into the group. So, like I had a whole backstory with him into the group, and uh, it, it was actually supposed to uh, all lead up. We're supposed to ha- there's supposed to be like a quote unquote fourth member, uh, and it's all supposed to lead up to Slammiversary this past year, where uh, like me, uh, Eddie, and and Bram, like we all unmask and you know who we are and stuff when we do matches and stuff, but it do something where uh, we would build something up with me and Lashley going into Slammiversary, uh, and then uh, Josh Matthews would come to interview me, and uh, <clears throat> and we'd kind of rough him up a little bit, but it kind of he had like a secret camera on him or something, and do something where he kind of sees the uh, like the fourth member sitting in the corner with the mask and stuff on, and you really don't know who that is, and and then do something where. Uh, in the match, uh, EC3 comes in and hits me with the beer bottle. Uh, I go down, one, two, kick out. Uh, then Bram and Eddie come out, and they beat up on EC3. They kind of fight off, and then the fourth member comes out and takes the mask off, and it's Jarrett, and he hits Lashley with the guitar. And he, and then uh, I, I pin Lashley, and Jeff's like, look, when I started TNA, uh, this guy was one of the first guys here, and now that we got GFW going, I want him to be my champion. So it was going kind of all in line and stuff like that. But it just got, you know, when different powers kind of took over, it just kind of got through way off course. Hey, this is Riju from Sportskeeda in India. Uh, my question is, uh, are you still in touch with Bobby Roode? And what do you think of his success outside TNA? Thank you. Uh, yeah, you know, you know, I'll shoot him a text every now and then. It ain't like we talk every day or even every week. You know, uh, you know, I'll text him and say congratulations because you know that guy definitely uh, has earned everything that he's got uh, coming to him. You know, and uh, uh, he, he just, you know, he he proved what he proved here that he he can get in the ring with anyone and uh, and I always say if. if you know, if he can go on and make a living, which, you know, he's doing, you know, the best to him. And uh, and I wish him nothing but the luck. Hey, James, this is Braden from the Fight Network up in Toronto. Um, I just have a question. I followed your career since the days of uh, America's Most Wanted, which was my favorite uh, tag team. When you guys were the heels, man, you guys were nasty. But I have uh, a two-part question. First, uh, any any future goals or anything that you want to do or accomplish in your career going forward? And my second one is just a small one. If I were to be going to Nashville, what's the bar that I go to? <laughs> uh, well, you know, the the first one is uh, you know pretty simple. Like you know, I, I just I'm I'm having fun. Uh, you know, so so many people get wrapped up in titles and championships and all this, and I always say, you know, that's that's fine and dandy, but. Uh, you know, when I go to the bank, they don't ask me if I'm a champion. That's what I tell a lot of guys, you know, but, uh, you know, I pretty much have done it all here, uh, at impact. So, uh, we just, I just got to kind of sit back and see what, what I kind of want to do next. And, uh, you know, and if you're ever coming to Nashville, I would definitely say, you know, everybody wants to go to Tootsie's because that's supposed to be like the famous bar in Nashville, but definitely check out a place called the wild beaver. Uh, one of my friends, uh, runs it and it's a, it's a really cool, bar and also a, a a place called Big Shots. So Big Shots and Wild Beaver. Hi James, this is Jeremy from Real Sport. Um I just wanted to ask you about um working with Montgomery Gentry in the past. Uh, obviously with uh, Troy passing away recently, if you had any memories and uh, what your thoughts are about it all. Yeah, you know, Troy was definitely a really good friend of mine, and uh, uh, we had so much fun uh, shooting that uh, music video. Um, my aunt was his, his uh, was his personal assistant, 
and uh, that's kind of how we kind of met and just we, we just hit it off and became friends. And Troy is one of those guys that like nobody really had anything bad to say about him just because he was just a, a great guy and a great friend to everyone. And uh, and I just remember when we were shooting the music video for Long Necks and Red, Rednecks down at this bar kind of close to my house, they were supposed to play the Grand Ole Opry later that night, but uh, we had <laughs> we had drank so much whiskey during the filming that uh, they had to postpone the show at the Grand Ole Opry for like an hour and a half just to kind of sober up a little bit. Uh, but that, you know, that's, that's just one of the memories I had. Like I, I, there's so many times when, uh, you know, if I just needed someone to talk to or whatever, if I was just having any kind of problem, like I can call Troy no matter what time of day or night it was. And he'd always answer no matter what. So he'll definitely be missed by me. Hey James, this is a big fear from spot one in Israel. Uh, I have a uh, two short questions for you. Uh, one of them is, is uh, do you think we'll ever see you with Impact Wrestling in Israel, perform in Israel? And uh, the second one is, what do you think about the partnership with uh, AAA and NOAA Pro Wrestling? There are a lot of uh, great wrestlers coming to your roster of Impact, and it's kind of uh, different styles all over the place. How do you fit to do out to the other styles of the wrestlers? Yeah, you know, <clears throat> hopefully... Uh, hopefully Impact Wrestling definitely uh, uh, start touring more, and uh, hopefully Israel is one of the, the places they'll go. Uh, I know they it was a big hit when we went to India, and uh, anytime we go overseas, it, it seems to be uh, a pretty big deal. Uh, but you know, as far as the, the partnerships with like Triple A and, and Noah and stuff, I, I think it's great for everyone involved, just because it gives uh, more eyes uh, on the talent that's on the shows. Uh, and, and, and you kind of see matchups that you don't, you would never see, and it just talent swaps, you know, with with us going to Noah and Triple A going to Noah, and, and vice versa, Noah going to Triple A in here. Uh, so it just it just helps out the guys even more, and and kind of step up their game because now they have to kind of learn and adapt uh, to different styles of of, of wrestling. Uh, you, you know, I always say that's that's fine and dandy with me with the with the styles they have. They can flip and flop all they want because. You know, they got to land it sometime, and I'll be there with a super kick for them. <laughs> Hi, James. This is Raj Geary with WrestlingInc.com. I uh, I just How's wanted going, to know. Man? Good man. How are you? Good. Uh, I just wanted to get your thoughts on uh, TNA. Uh, used to get criticized so much in the past for taking so much WWE talent. And now, uh, you know, you got WWE taking so much uh, TNA talent. Uh, do you think there's a little bit of uh, hypocrisy there? Yeah, you know, I always tell fans all the time, like, they, they don't get it. Like, you, you know, uh, it's the talent who, who looks at this as a business. You know, like, uh, so many fans just look at it as, oh, well, he's a, he's a sellout because he jumped ship and went there or he – jump ship and went there and it's not like that like you know we have to provide for our family so wherever we can go to get work that's what we're going to do and it just seems that it kind of gets overlooked when the wwe uh picks up tna guys or whatever but as soon as like you said as soon as tna uh impact picks up a wwe guy it's like oh they're picking up a, a, a wwe guy blah 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 you know and that's not really fair for the guy because he's just looking for a place to, you know, provide for his family. And they wouldn't hire them if they didn't think that they had something that could help them. Plain and simple. A lot of people don't don't see that. They just see, oh well, he got fired, so they're going to pick him up. No, there's a reason they picked him up or they hired him. It's because he has something that they think can be valued to the company. Hi, James. How's it going, man? How's it going, man? Yeah, not bad, not bad. You? Ah, <laughs> uh, can't complain. Uh, can't complain. <laughs> yeah. 30 somewhere. So, yeah, it's me again, unfortunately. Um, right, so uh, I'll come straight out with it, James. If you wanted to, uh, you know, reclaim the tag team gold in the near future or the distant future, whatever it may be, who would you choose as a tag team partner? And please elaborate on why you would choose them. Uh you, you know that's uh that's one of those million dollar questions that you know I like I really don't 
feel like doing any more tag team wrestling right now. Like I just want to kind of uh, do stuff on my own and prove that, you know, I can do stuff on my own just because so long I've been doing tag team or, you know, a faction here or there. And, it's, you know, I've, I've been there and done it. Uh, uh, you know, I kind of proved, proved myself in tag team. And now I want to prove myself as a singles wrestler because I know that, that I can do it. But, you know, if there was a, uh, a guy that, you know, in, in the company now that I had to be tag team with, uh, you know, it would probably, I would probably have to say uh, either Eddie Edwards or EC3 just because I know what they're capable of in the ring and they have the same kind of mindset as I do is, you know, we're not going out there to try to overshadow each other and, and be the bigger star. We're going out there to do a job and, and, and get a get a team over. Hey, James, it's Graham Matthews, Dinremote.com. Uh, first and foremost, I wanted to thank you as I had ordered a hat from your merchandise store a few weeks ago, and I'd taken a few weeks to get there because there was a mix-up in the mail, and you ended up including a, uh, a wristband with it. So I wanted to thank you for that. I appreciate it. Oh, you're welcome, man. Sorry it took so long, man. Like, I, I mail it all out myself, so sometimes my schedule gets messed up. And, you know, and like I, I think yours was one with the address was wrong. Is that, is that correct? Yeah, that is correct. Yep. Yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, no, I just wanted to say I appreciate that. It's a great half. But anyway, my question for you, uh, your Bound for Glory 2012 match with Bobby Roode is one of my personal favorites, but you've had a number of great matches at the event over the years with the great Muda on the main event of the 2014 show in Japan, uh, EV2, yeah, EV2.0, Team 3D, among others. Uh, does any one match of Bound for Glory stand out as your personal favorite? Uh, you, you know, you, you said it, uh, the 2012 with uh, Bobby Roode, just because, you know that was this, the kind of the blow off uh, of our feud, and uh, it was actually supposed to have been for uh, for the world title, but you know stuff just kind of got mixed around, and uh, you know I'm not worried about it. But you know me and Bobby just wanted to go out there and you know just beat the hell out of each other, and I always tell everybody like my best feuds have been with my ex partners, uh, you know even with Gunner, like you know, we just go out there and we just beat each other up and. Uh, and I always tell everybody, like, I think the better friends you are, the, the more you beat each other up. So I, I would definitely have to say maybe, like you know, like I said, 2012 with Bobby Roode and, uh, for the Bound for Glory. Awesome. Thanks. Hi, James. Uh, it's Bikram from ImpactAsylum.com. I was wondering, you went you go, earlier this year to uh, – Pro wrestling, no. I was wondering what your experience was wrestling the next ace of the company in Kaito Kiyomaya. Yeah, uh, the, the guy's really good. Uh, you know, he, he's still still really young, but uh, he's definitely going to be a big star uh, over in Japan. And uh, I have nothing but good things to say about him. You know, from from his ring presence to his timing, and uh, like I didn't even know that he hasn't really been in the ring that long. And uh, you know, afterwards is when I found out, and he he just kind of amazed me when I was in there with him. Hey, Mr. Storm, can you hear me a little better now? Yeah. <laughs> All right, very good. This is Big Ray for One Wrestling dot com. Uh, you know, the, the conversation in the beginning, uh, uh, Bill Apter intrigued me. Now, is there a love of karaoke? I mean. Is this uh, music? Y your theme song is such a... I love your theme song. I'm a big music guy. I love music. All types of music. Hip-hop, country, doesn't matter. So what are your influences growing up regarding music? And can you elaborate a little bit of what is a teenage James Storm like growing up? <laughs> Man, uh, you know, I, I don't know. That's one of those uh, what happens in my youth stays in my youth. <laughs> it feels like basis, you know. <laughs> but, uh, y y you know, it's, uh, I was... You know, I was pretty crazy and wild, but I, I wasn't one of those kids that uh, always got in trouble. Uh, you know, I didn't really break the law or whatever, but, you know, I did do some things that I wasn't supposed to be doing as a teenager and stuff. But, you know, uh, you know, definitely, like I said, I grew up, you know, listening to Merle Hager and, and Johnny Cash and, uh, you know, Elvis Presley and, and guys like that. And uh, that's just kind of, I like that old, the, the old style of country, uh, kind of outlawish uh, kind of country. And, like my new, uh, the new version of Lone Necks and Red Necks, I actually wrote that myself and oh. kind of uh, just, you know, updated the whole song and everything. And then the DCC song, I wrote that. So and I'm kind of writing some new stuff for some other people. So hopefully it, it'll come out really good, cool too. 
So can we go on the record? Who is the true king of karaoke? Is it you or Bill After? I want to know right now. Oh, it's me. Bill After, I'll try to tell you that he's a good Barry Manilow, but, like, he's a good Barry Manilow if he was, like, if the volume was really low. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> no, he's actually good, though. Like, I don't know what it is, but, like, for some reason, uh, girls sit there and watch him. I don't know if, <laughs> why, but they do. It's the comb over. Thank you so much. <laughs> That's it. Come over. <laughs> hey, uh, this is Riju from Sports Kid again. Uh, my question is with regard to the last call. Now uh, there are several uh, performers in wrestling today who use the super kick multiple times in a match. Most notably, the Young Bucks. Do you think that devalues the super kick? What's your opinion on the uh, whole thing? Uh, uh, what's my opinion on like people using the super kick so much or whatever? Yes. You know, yes. I, I, I say, I say, you know, if they want to do it, that's that's up to them. I mean, it's, you know, they they've made money off of it. You know, other people do it, that's fine. You know, but you know, when I'm in a match with someone, it it, it only gets to use once. I always say they can knock people down with theirs, but I knock people out. Uh, you know, you didn't see uh, to me, you didn't see Shawn Michaels, you know, throwing four, five, six super kicks in the match, uh, you know, and it's just one of those things. And, uh, you know, Sean protected it, and, you know, I've been using it for, you know, 15 years. And, uh, you know, anytime I'm in the ring or whatever, like, you know, I try to protect it as well. Hey, James Ryan Bowman from the Uh First of all, I want to say thanks. You came up to Illinois in May to do a show to benefit tornado victims, and you were amazing. You took it at the last minute, and it really helped out a lot. So thank you so much. Yeah, um, yeah no problem. I'm always one of those guys who, you know, if I get a chance to give back to any, anything, like, you know, I, I, I don't mind doing it at all. So. Uh, just real quick, what you, you've accomplished so much in your career. Uh, what are some of the things you still want to do? Are there still countries you want to wrestle in, or are there opponents you want to work with? Uh, yeah, you know, there's, uh, you know, there's a lot of stuff that, you know, I still want to accomplish in wrestling. I don't know if I can really talk about it right now, hint, hint, but, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, but, you know, it's just, there's, there's still a lot of places that, you know, uh, I'd love to wrestle, uh, Australia being one of them. Uh, I'd love to go down to Brazil, uh, and, and wrestle down there, uh, cause I always heard you know, great stories, you know, when Matt and Jeff used to go down there and wrestle all the time. And, you know, Tommy Dreamer has told stories about Australia and how cool it is to, you know, wrestle out there. So those are two definitely spots that, you know, I, I want to wrestle uh, before I, you know, before I finish up. But, uh, you know, I still got a long ways to go before I finish up. Hey, James, this is Riju again. Uh, my question is with regard to your run uh, with DCC. You worked extensively against the Broken Hardies. What did you think of the gimmick, and what did you think of the program with the Hardies? Thank you. Uh, yeah, I mean, any time I can get in the ring with uh, Matt and Jeff is, is fun, just because uh, you know they're so over, so it doesn't really matter what kind of happens in the match. Like it's gonna, the crowd is gonna be excited and have fun uh, as this goes to show you like really how over uh the hardies are uh and have been for the last you know 15 years uh you, you know i i think we could have got more out of uh our dcc and hardy angle uh, but you know that is what it is and uh no use to crying in the past but uh but yeah i mean anytime i can get in the ring with those guys uh it's a blast because they're two of the favorite guys i love to to wrestle with where the, where they're you know i was i was a good guy wrestling evil Matt or whether I'm the bad guy wrestling, you know, the name, Ignema Jeff Hardy. Uh, it's always fun. Hello there. It's uh, Francis from In Ring Pop in the UK. Uh, my question is this, right? You're a 16, you've held 16 championships in Impact Wrestling and you should, you know quite a lot of things. Um, what's your thoughts about uh, the Impact World Wrestling World Championship now being held by Eli Drake and would it be something you might Consider and get a 17-time title. Yeah, you know, uh, you know, I had to say props uh, to Eli Drake. You know, he's he's accomplished a lot in the short time he's been here. But uh, you know, he 
runs around like uh, he's too good for anyone. Uh, you know, he just got to – and, you know, I proved it before when, you know, we uh, fought over the uh, the global title. Uh you know, it's just one of those. Uh, it's one of those things that uh, he, he gets in the ring with the wrong person, and they're just going to shut him up because you know. But I will have to give credit to him. He's an amazing athlete, great performer in the ring. But he's just one of those guys that I think just rubs guys the wrong way uh, that don't know how to take him. And uh, but like I said, kudos to him for accomplishing a lot in a short time. Hi, James. It's uh, Adam from uh, the Impact Manager again. Um, you were very kind uh, enough to talk about uh, what were the plans for uh, the DCC earlier on. Uh, obviously, earlier in the year at Stamiversary, which I was at, um, you, you had the concussion angle, which doesn't really seem to have played out that much on, on TV. Is that going to be revisited, or was there something more to it at the time that, that just didn't make it to air? Can you maybe give us a bit more on that? <laughs> hey, tell you the truth, you, just, you know more than I do, seriously. I you know, I, I don't know why, you know, it wasn't brought up more and made more into an angle. Uh, but, you know, I don't, uh, I'm not creative and I just show up and do what I'm told. But I just, you know, as a, as a wrestler, I, that's one of the things I scratch my head at and be like, well, what? you know, I was off TV for nine, ten weeks. You'd think there would be some kind of big story uh, behind this that we would use going forward or whatever. But as far as I know now, there's, there's no plans to use it going forward. Hi, James. One more question for you, my friend. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Excellent, excellent. So, uh, you know, what I was going to say earlier uh, was, you know, to be fair, you're all looking in the best shape I've personally ever seen you and we've all ever seen you. You know, so that indicates to us that you're not going anywhere anytime soon. So please, you know, just give us a little brief description on, you know, what we can expect from James Storm and what the future holds for you, sir. Uh, man, you know, I, I just, uh, uh, there's a lot that I can't really talk about, but, you know, I always say you never know what the future holds. Uh, might be a new door opening. I, you know, I don't know. Uh, you know, uh, all I can do is just, uh, just work my butt off and just get in the best shape I can and, uh, you, you know, to show up for work and, and do what I'm told. And, and uh, that's, that's really a wrestler's mentality is, uh, you know, his job is to just to be ready and whenever his number's called and get in the ring is do his job. So uh, right now I'm just having fun, uh, you know, being the old cowboy James Storm and just going out there and helping young guys out and uh, just you know, telling them what they need to do and how to work on TV and stuff. So uh, right now I'm just kind of enjoying the ride. At impact. Hey James, Grant Matthews from Henroad.com again. Uh, your first world title victory took place a couple days removed from Bound for Glory back in 2011. Uh, from your understanding, was having Bobby Roode lose his shot of the title at BFG that year, only to have you win out in a subsequent show the plan the entire time, or was that a last minute decision? No, uh, how, how it was all explained to me, it was kind of like a last minute decision. Uh, like, cause I thought Bobby was supposed to be going over, you know, on Kurt at the, at the show. And I was watching the match. Uh, and then that happened. I was just like, what happened? And I just got changed at the last second. And then, uh, you know, then the next day at TV is when, when they told me that, you know, we're going to do a deal where we just put the belt on you or whatever. And I was like, all right, well, let's, let's do it. Okay, cool. But yeah, it was just, it was just kind of just hit, I think both me and him just out of the blue, like, you know, because it was just changed so fast uh, at a split second. But, you know, being the professionals we are, like, it don't really bother us. We just uh, just roll with the punches and just keep going. So. Hi, it's Jeremy from Real Sport again. Um, I wanted to ask about your brief stint in NXT and what influenced the decision to, to leave there and go back to Impact. Uh, you know, it was, uh, you know, I had a, you know, I sat down and I had a talk with Hunter and, uh, you, you know, a lot of people say, oh, it was money and money and all this. And it, it wasn't, it was basically uh, a family thing that, uh, that I had to decide, you know, because I knew I'd be a lot on the road a lot more with NXT because, you know, Hunter was telling me they're going to run between a hundred and 125 shows, uh, the next two years or whatever. So it was just one of the things and my wife, 
you know, wanted to have another kid and, uh, but we had to, she had to do shots and, and all this and I had to be at home a lot more. And it was just a decision, you know, do I, you know, go and, and live this crazy dream of, of wrestling in the WWE or do I, uh, stay home and, and help my wife, you know, have another child that she wants. And so at the end of the day, I just, uh, you know, decided that, that you know, I, my family is really important to me. So my wife wanted to have another kid and, uh, thank God everything turned out the way it did. And we've got a healthy baby boy that's, uh, you know, eight months old. So, so we're good to go. Hi, James. Last one for me for tonight. Um, just curious as to obviously wrestling across the board, all, all companies, you know, the viewership seems to be turning off a little bit. If it was your dime uh, running uh, impact at the moment, what, what do you think could bring casual fans back to the product? What, how would you build the show? Uh, well, first of all, I would start having a uh, tear. Like, uh, you know, like to me, we don't have uh, the John Cena or even the Roman Reigns or something like that. Like uh, Impact, it seems like they try to make everybody on the same level. And, you know, being in the wrestling business 20 years, I've never – had it be like that, like, you know, even on independent shows, you have kind of the undercard and then you have the main event that the undercard is trying to work toward, uh, you know, but to me, it seems like at impact, they try to make everybody on the same level and everybody's fighting for every title. Uh, whereas to me, I think it should be, you have your main event guys and you have your undercard and your undercard title. Uh, and then all the undercard guys are working to try to get to that spot. You know, growing up, I always watched Bret Hart and Mr. Perfect wrestle for the Intercontinental Belt all the time, you know, while you had Hulk Hogan and those guys doing the heavyweight stuff. And then once Hogan and them moved out, then you had Brett and them move up, and then the other guys came in and start wrestling for the IC title. You know, and to me, I think it kind of needs to go kind of back toward that a little bit. Hello there, it's Francis again from In Ring Pop. Um, my question is this, um, with Impact Wrestling being moved out of the Impact Zone and um, be, like being in Canada, where would you like to see Impact Wrestling um, go next, maybe the UK or international? Yeah, I'd definitely lo love to see it go back to the UK because uh, I just remember those tours we, we ran in the UK. Even when I go back to do indie shows, like it's a, it's a great reception, uh, you know, every time I come out. And I just know that, uh, you know, that you should definitely do, uh, like, you know, tours again. Like, you know, they don't have to run all these 15, 20,000 seat arenas. Uh, you know, you can run you know, these 3,000 to 5,000 places and just, you know, fill them up easy because, you know, uh, especially over in England, like they'll come out and they'll support Impact Wrestling. Uh, but it's just one of those things that, you know, it, it's going to take a little time, you know, to, for me, what I believe, uh, just to kind of get all the finances and stuff back in line is what Anthem's trying to do, and, you know, it's not going to be an overnight, you know, process. It's going to take a little while. So they're just taking baby steps to, to finally get to that point, I do believe. Hi, James. This is Rod with Wrestling Inc. again. Uh, there's been a lot of talk about the branding of the company, and uh, I guess I guess what it's referred to uh, – have you heard anything regarding that? And do you have a personal preference about what you'd like the company to be called? Yeah, it's just, uh, you, you know, uh, all I know is what I, I read on the Internet. <laughs> you know, but no, it's uh, I, I'm so used to calling it TNA just because I've been here for, you know, 15 years. and I know a lot of other guys still refer to it as TNA. But, you know, uh, I think it's just the lettering, like, you know, especially being here in the States when you tell someone, hey, I wrestle for TNA, they kind of look at you like you're a weirdo or something. But, uh, you know, because they think something totally different. But, you know, I, I think it should just be called Impact Wrestling, you know, just plain and simple. Uh, you know, that's what the name of the show is. That's that's what a lot of, you know, wrestling fans are accustomed to, um, you know. But, you know, at the end of the day, that's not my call. We have time for just a couple more questions. 
Hey, James, this is Graham Matthews from Henro.com again. A few stars can say that you've been around and been around for as long as you have for over 15 years, as you said, and remain relevant and continue to reinvent yourself from beer money, America's Most Wanted, the cowboy persona, the DCC, and so on and so forth. Uh, what has gone into your various transformations? Uh, just life. <laughs> you know, just uh, just try, trying to keep up with the times and just, you know, just having all these different life experiences and just kind of learning from them and then putting – putting these life experiences into my character and, uh, you know, just, just going out and just seeing if it works, you know, not being, not being afraid to try new things. You know, a lot of guys are, are afraid to try new things, especially on TV. And I said, you, you don't know until they work, you know, and, uh, until you try them. And it's just one of those things that, and I think it'll help getting out of the impact zone is uh, a lot of guys can try different things and see how they work in front of crowds, especially if we do, you know, house shows and live events or whatever. And that, and I think that's what kind of hurts a lot of guys too, is because, you know, back when we were running strong with the, the house shows, you know, especially beer money, like we'd go out there and we'd do stupid stuff to see if it worked. Uh, you, you know, and that's how we started out with the beer money suplex. Uh, you know, we just started doing it on house shows and it started catching on. So we started doing it on TV and then, you know, different house shows, we practice other things, and if it worked, we used it on TV. If it didn't, then we scrap it and come up with something new. Hey, Mr. Storm, Big Ray for OneWrestling.com. One last time. Um, I want to ask you a little bit of a fun question. Uh, let's say you had the opportunity. You had your own time machine. You can wrestle any era, any time, any organization. Where would you wrestle, what organization, and who would be your feud? Who would be the biggest feud you would have within that organization? Uh, you know, it's funny that you say that because my all-time uh, favorite wrestlers that I would definitely wrestle uh, would be Mr. Perfect. Uh, it was one of those cool things that when he was here early in the time that I got to hang out with him, and he, he taught me so much. Like he, he pulled me aside after one of my matches and just, and just tell me, different things like one of the things he told me <clears throat> was hey what'd you do that for and i was like what he goes pick the guy up and i would just tell him I'm like well because we're going to run this other spot he goes don't ever pick anybody up he goes the name of the game is to either make somebody submit or pin them on the ground if you pick somebody up then you automatically tell them that it's fake and that's just one of the things i never thought of until he said it to me and i, I tell that to a lot of young guys like never pick someone up always kind of let them feed up or something and but you know i uh, if I had to go to any organization, uh, it, it would definitely be like USWA uh, that was out of Memphis, that did Memphis, Nashville, Louisville and stuff. Because, you know, I, I can remember going to the fairgrounds when I was young and seeing Steve Austin and The Undertaker, and Sting, and, you know, all these guys go through uh, Nashville and Louisville and Memphis. Uh, you know, and one of my favorite wrestlers growing up, going to the fairgrounds and stuff, watching it was hot stuff Eddie Gilbert and I can just remember just watching him thinking he was you know bigger than life back in the day thank you cowboy yeah, man. hello James David Dunn with the New Zealand Pro Wrestling Informer again uh, over the last couple of months there's been a lot of discussion around the global wrestling network or whatever the eventual name Maybe. Uh, how important do you think is it for Impact Wrestling to have a service like the WWE Network, like uh, New Japan World, UFC Fight Pass, things like this, a way for fans to be able to dive into the archives and watch all the footage that uh, TNA Impact Wrestling has put out over the years? Yeah, I, I think it's definitely um, a really positive thing. You know, I heard that it might launch as early as the 10th. Uh, so uh, hopefully, hopefully it all goes off good and. and uh, it's just one of those things that is another step in the right direction for the company, uh, especially, you know, you can have even the new fans go back and kind of watch the older stuff, uh, you know, like when AJ and, and Joe and all those guys were here and, and Punk and, uh, you know, you, and if someone says America's Most Wanted, they can go back and see what America's Most Wanted was or even Beer Money or, you know, just stuff like that. So I think I think it's really important and really cool for uh, for Impact to have that out. Hello there again, it's Francis from Ibrahim Pop. Uh, my question is like this, um, you've wrestled in Mexico, and I want to know what your thoughts about um, the superstars of Lucha Libre, AAA. Uh, you, you know, they were very respectful. Uh, and it was, it's, I love wrestling in Mexico, uh, you know, even though I don't do a lot of 
uh, the Lucha stuff, uh, you know, but I, I know how to work with the guys and, and I can work around their style. And that's one of the, the credits that, you know, I take pride on is I can kind of work with anyone's style. Uh, it's just, uh, you, you know, going down there, the, their fans are to me kind of like what the UK fans are, you know, they're just rabid and just they're there having fun and yelling and making noise. And uh, that's what wrestlers love. Like, you know, if, if I was a fan sitting in the crowd, you know, I'm not going to pay so much money for a, a front row ticket and just sit there on my hands. Like I'm going to have fun. And, you know, as a, as a performer and as a wrestler, uh, we love to like look out and just see people having fun, whether they're cheering or booing. It's just a, it's just a great feeling to see them make a noise and hear them making a noise. Hey James, this is Ali from Israel, from Sport One. Uh, how are you doing? I'm doing great, man. How are you doing? I'm good, man. Thank you. I'm a, a huge fan. Uh, as a, as an uh, Impact Wrestling uh, original, being for 15 years in the company, uh, Impact Wrestling had its ups and downs over the cap uh, couple of years. Uh, what do you think about uh, the position of Impact Wrestling these days in the pro wrestling world? Uh, you, you know, it's a it's a rebuilding process. Um, you know, I've, I've seen it before, and uh, it, it, it's something that uh, it, it doesn't happen overnight. Like I said before, it, it's going to take a little while, but I, I really think with uh, Anthem and uh, is is taking baby steps, and but definitely going in the right direction, especially forming partnerships with uh, you know Noah and AAA, and uh, so it, it's it's always good to to have partnerships like that, especially you know when they get ready to launch the network. Like you get to see all these other stars on there as well. So, you know, it's just baby steps, uh, you, you know, and, and hopefully uh, sooner or later everything's going to turn around. Hey, James, this is Riju from Sportskira again. Uh, is there any young performer you look at and you think this is the next James Tom? Thank you. Hell no. <laughs> not, not at all. What's wrong with you, man? There'll never be another James Storm. Hey James, this is a Dick Fear from Israel Sport One again. Uh, as a tag team specialist, uh, you had a lot of championships, a lot of success in the in your career. Uh, what do you think about the tag team division in wrestling today, opposite to the golden era and the 90s, where the wrestlers had their whole career in the in this division? Yeah, you know, and it, there was a time here at Impact when you know the tag team division was head over shoulders over the, you know, the, the single titles, you know, when you had, you know, beer money and the motor city machine guns and team 3d and LAX, uh, you know, that it, we were really, you know, having fun back in those times with the, with the tag team division. And, um, you, you know, I, I think right now impact, there's not really a big emphasis on it. I think that there needs to be because there's a, you know, you got to start building uh, tag team wrestling. It seems like it just kind of gets thrown to the side. Uh, but I think, uh, you, you know, definitely within the next year or so, uh, there'll be a big emergence uh, in, in the tag team division here at Impact Wrestling again. Hey, James. Riju from Sotskira again. Um, so I, I am calling from India. Uh, I watched you wrestle in India. How was it wrestling here, and how different was the experience from wrestling in the United States? Uh, you know, it, it was fun. Uh, you know, I, I tell everybody, like, whoa, you went to India to wrestle? Like, why don't you go there? Because it was fun. <laughs> it, was a, it was a lot of fun, you know. My whole experience in, in India was, was great, and uh, just the, the fans, you know, you, you can see them on the TV, like, they were there to, having fun, and uh, you, you know, and, and the guys in the ring just, you know, ate it up. Like, we didn't know what to expect, you know, walking out, and we didn't know if they know who we are or whatever, and, you know, they did. And, uh, and I would say, you know, only in India will you see, you know, you know, seven, eight hundred thousand people in the crowd, uh, you know, Indians chanting for a cowboy. <laughs> All righty, we will uh, go one final question. Ryan, once again, final question is here. Hey, Ryan Bowman from the Gorilla Position again. Um, as one of the original guys in the company, you've seen all the changes, the ups and downs all over the years, James. Heading into 2018, 
where do you see yourself and Impact Wrestling from there and beyond? And thanks for your time today. Yeah, man, no problem at all. Uh, you know, it's it's one of those things like uh, you know, whether I'm whether I'm here or not, uh always, you know, wish the best on the company and, and, and especially the boys that work here because, you know, I always get uh I always get a little ill when, when I hear fans or see fans uh tweet or or whatever saying that impact needs to die and all this stuff because you know, to me that's a bunch of BS. Uh it gives the guys another place to, to be able to work and feed their family. Um, because let's face it, like if it goes out of business, like WWE is not going to pick up all these guys. So there might be some guys that don't get picked up, and now you don't get to see them anymore. Uh, but uh, you know, I always say I see bright things for for Impact, especially if they're staying the course that they're staying, just because you know they're making baby steps and making progress, and that's what matters. Is uh, you know slowly start making money back, and just don't lose a lot at at one time. And, uh, and I definitely see them, like I said, taking the right step in the right direction. All righty. Well, Cowboy, I appreciate your time. Why don't you have a, uh, a final thought as we uh, wrap it up for this week? Yeah, man. Be sure to tell everybody on your freaking websites and podcasts or whatever else you're doing, go to my website and support the Cowboy James Storm by buying a damn T-shirt or something. All righty. Well, media, I appreciate it. We will have another uh, star next week for the uh, weekly teleconference. I appreciate everybody calling in once again. Q&A session is over.